Hmm. Get one of these. <laughs> wow. So, so I just wanted to pop in and talk about this. Uh, the latest stir up. <clears throat> you read my headline: Fake Awan case sparks Trump firing Jeff Sessions. Ooh. So maybe it wasn't a waste of time after all. Imran Awan, the Pakistani spy guy in Congress. <clears throat> Trump is all over this shit. Whoa, calls Jeff Sessions. The attorney general says, oh, fucking Sessions sitting on his hands doing nothing. The Awan case, Imran Awan getting let out the back door. That's what sparked it. We are having an effect. Keep the pressure. <laughs> Keep the pressure on there, kids. Am I too low? Ah, you want to see more of me. <laughs> I want to see more of me. So, so that's pretty big news. Donald Trump is uh, sitting in the White House today, and he's he's just fed up. He's like he's like fuck this shit, right? I'm the boss, right? Trump is in charge of the DOJ, right? Executive branch, FBI, CIA, NSA, blah blah. All those agencies are under the jurisdiction of the executive branch. In the legislative branch, we have Senate and Congress. I feel like I have to educate all of this. Keep saying this shit over and over again. And then there's the uh, judicial. That's all the judges, the fake judges, right? And th that's supposed to be the separations of power. Remember separations, the three separations of power under the Constitution? We don't have that anymore. What we have is <coughs> money controlling the whole thing, money moving <coughs> Everything sideways, power goes up and down and sideways, and congressmen are paying off, you know, the, 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 the judicial, and the judicial's paying off the, you know, the, the FBI and the CIA, and, the, the, and above all of that is the, the monopolies, the oligarchies, the oligopoly, the power players, the handful of billionaires that control everything. Right? So, so Jeff Sessions is on, so t Trump is... Trump is fighting a swamp that he thinks is a swamp, and he thinks that the solution is, is, you know, wholly in getting rid of these swamp creatures, right? Getting rid of the corruption, the people who turn their eye on the corruption, guys like Jeff Sessions, where there was clearly massive evidence to suggest that Imran Awan was operating a quid pro quo spy ring of some sort and selling state secrets out the back door to the high bid, right? Extreme evidence. Now, if you crack that case, then that leads you right to the DNC case because guess what? It's the same laptop. Imran Awan was Debbie Wasserman Schultz's IT guy who was also the chairman of the DNC during the whole fake Russia story. So Imran Awan is monstrously important. <laughs> it's just it's obscenely important. I mean I mean it's just it's just unbelievably important to have hammered down Imran Awan. Right? And aired out his dirty laundry. If you want to find Russia collusion, if you want to find, you know, the Russians inside of the DNC, all you got to do is look at Imran Awan, you know, and you'll find something in those laptops. You'll understand how Hillary Clinton, you know, was allowed to delete thousands of emails and classified information being housed on outside servers to hide a quid pro quo pay for play operation. Now, if you go in there, you want you want to talk about Paul Manafort and the, the, the minor the minorness of his crimes. If you were to look into the DNC, you will see massive quid pro quo. All felonies, right? You'll see ma you'll see treason. You'll see actual politicians selling secrets to the high bid. And you'll also see you'll 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 have enough evidence to lock up every major banker, um, you know, security firm on insider trading, right? When someone passes information with the intent to 
to manipulate markets or take advantage and enrich themselves in markets that's insider trading it's using information that no one else is privy to and that's the that's the significance of Imran Awan. That's the significance of that case where you you have the goods, you have the guy, you know how it, how they were operating. It was some sort of network where they were using blackberries and information was I don't, I don't want to use the word hack because he had access. That's not hacking. He was controlling the flow of information as an IT guy. Him, his wife Nina Alvi and and there was like three or four other people. We don't know how many, but they were on the payroll and such. So the, the Imran Awan story is so important, and Trump knows it, right? Okay? One in seven, uh, uh, I, I digress. One in seven people in America are on food stamps. 70, 60, 70% of the country doesn't have $400 to their name, right? Billionaires just got a, the, the corporate entities just got a tax break. Their tax bracket went from 34 down to 20 on monies they don't pay anyway. Apple made $35 billion, didn't pay, paid zero in tax. Right? Now, I know, I know there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess my scope is widening, right? And uh, I, I was a Bernie guy, right? And look, Bernie Sanders is in the news today. The most popular president, the most popular po politician, again. Why is Bernie Sanders so popular? Right? Be not, not Bernie Sanders, the old man screaming Russia did it. Not that guy. I'm talking about 2016 when he had some testicles and he said, you know, he showed us the problem. He didn't show, he, he showed a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people are are aware of it but he showed us the the economic crises in america that why is one in seven people on food stamps and why is there one percent of the population that has so much wealth and so much unspendable liquidity that they don't reciprocate it doesn't hit the real market and you have stagnation you have uh, velocity of money is very stagnant when that happens right big economic terms uh oh marcus knows about economics I was a trader. I traded on Wall Street. I know what I'm talking about. So you have this popular guy, Bernie Sanders, that, that the, the, the new polling, who, who even knows? The polls, 538 and, and that jerk off uh, uh, Nate Silver, that's all rigged. Those guys are totally rigged. 538 and uh, clear, clear politics. What is it, real clear politics? It's all, that's all pay-for-play shit, right? But... The, the notion, and, and then the elections are rigged, so what does it really matter? Those numbers are put out there, and then, you know, they're, they're right now they're holding, the Democrats are holding the corporatist Joe Biden, the piece, the, the, sh the shit, the pile of shit, the shit sandwich, and they're holding it up next to Bernie Sanders, the, the golden dove who can beat Trump, right? That's what they're doing, because they'll never back, well, I don't know, never, but they're not going to back Trump, they're not going to back Sanders, because... Of the things that we're talking about, that Sanders is telling you the problem, right? I'm telling you the problem. Trump is he's 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 digging, but it's that's more of the corruption problem. But but the economic problem is it, it's beyond Trump. It's it it doesn't it doesn't go away with Trump. You transfer the swamp to a bunch of other creatures that fill the gap, right? But Trump, um, will Trump fire Jeff Sessions? That's a good one. I mean, he's breathing down the guy's back. The guy's a, the guy is, is, is impotent right now, Jeff Sessions. <clears throat> and he's making Trump look stupid, right? Trump's the boss, right? And Trump can't get a fair trial for some jerk-off Pakistani guy that, you know, some, some, some scumbag that <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's involved in, you know, massive <clears throat> Imran Awan is the throwaway guy. That's all he is. <clears throat> He's like the, the throwaway gun at the crime scene that the cops they shoot the guy and then they leave the throwaway gun, right? That's what they that's what Imran Awan is. He's the scapegoat, right? But and maybe Trump knows that. Trump's not stupid, but 
the, in the bigger picture, even if you drain all these swamp creatures, I'll say it again, even if you drain all the swamp creatures, you still have a swamp because you have the same exact, exact system, the same system, same flow of corruption, same flow of money down from the oligarchy. It's just going in different pockets. That's what they're fighting over. Democrat, Republican, they're fighting over who's going to get the money. That's all that fight is. Right? That's all it is. Right? But it's still, it's important, it's important, but I would like to see Trump say, you know what, one in seven people are on food stamps, how can we fix that? I'm going to build a wall, keep out the Mexicans, ah, fucking Mexicans, I can keep the fucking Mexicans out. That's not, that's not, in, that's insanity, that's stupid. It's stupid to think that the guys that clean your pots in, in, your, in the bodega in, in, in fucking, you know, Brooklyn, that guy's, that, he's the problem. It's so stupid, right? You've got, you've got banks stealing, looting the country legally. That's where we have to go, right? That's where we have to go. And Imran Awan's case, that story of unraveling a spy ring of quid pro quo insider trading reveals just how corrupt the system is, right? Hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm running, you know, in theory for... The United States Senate, you know, I just saw a clip with uh, my opponent. <laughs> it's funny you call it my opponent. Um, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, whatever her fucking name is, right? The the, the uh, fake senator from New York, right? Her and Chuck Schumer, have been, they've been, you know, they're, they're in bed with the, with the corporations. And she's attacking the Canova, the new, not Canova, I'm sorry, Tim. Cavanaugh. <laughs> um, the new, the new Supreme Court guy, Tim Canova, is running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Florida, and I hope he wins. I interviewed Tim Canova. He's a good, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. I hope he fucking wins this time. Right? He's running as an independent to knock out uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz in her district. If Tim Canova wins, we thought we think he won the last time, and he was cheated. But if he wins, that'd be pretty, pretty powerful stuff. But I digress. Uh, Kristen Gillibrand is um, the senator from New York, and I'm. I, who would you rather have? Even the five minutes that you might know me, or or the the year that you might know me, who would you rather have in as a senator? Someone like like me, who's going to fight to 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 destroy the, to expose the corruption. I I vow as senator of the United. Uh, United States Senator in New, for New York, I vow to make one video, one public video, every single day that I'm in office. I will do this for, on the bench, right, and, and present it directly to you. Trump with his tweets, good. Marcus Conti will be the senator with his phone and, 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 and hitting the, hitting the, the uh, publish button shortly after. Every day I'll do it. I'll, talk, I'll speak directly to the people Right now, you may not agree. Keep st stick around, stick around, especially Trump people. Stick around and listen to what I'm saying. Right? You have if you if you raise all these things that we're talking about. When you when I say raise the corporate tax rate, I don't mean raise your taxes. You're not a fucking. You're not worth ten billion dollars, ten million, whatever. What we do is we lower we lower average income tax. In in 1913, the income tax was was an invention right people didn't even know what it meant right to be taxed on your income how stupid right but now we we consider it normal right so we take that 35 percent number and we bring it down to like less than 10 so it's not so painful it's like sales tax eight percent it's not a big deal it's it's a deal but it's not that big of a deal right so people have regular people have more of their money and what you do is you jack the corporate tax rate who are not people they're, they're, they're entities that are supposed to be reciprocating the money, the theory of trickle-down economics, which is a failed theory of economics. For, for a moment, it worked in the 80s, arguably, and now it's, it's a failed system because it leads to monopoly. It leads to, especially, it leads to corporate socialism, where these corporations are taking all of the strength of the, the United States government to prop themselves up. And it, there's just no, there's no, there's no escaping it at this point, right? There's no, there's no way out of it, right? You have to stop it. 
it's it's you're sitting at the table monopoly we've all played it as kids and and you you, you can't win the guy across the table's got all the all the the houses and all the all the cars he's got all the pieces everything's in his side and you can't you're sitting there with your one little piece and your dollar you got one dollar right that's where we are right now right there's no look there's no shame i think people have a lot of shame in saying i'm poor right oh i'm unemployed and and then they they guilt themselves and say oh it's my fault no it's not your fault right it's you you uh, we have a corporate media in this country that's promoting this notion of of you know weakness you know the, the implorables they're stupid they can't do anything they don't know how to Look at me. Look how 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 much money I have. Look, it's look at me. Look at Rachel Maddow. Looks out her window from the Upper West Side and her eight million dollar condo, and she looks down at the little people now, right? And she doesn't, you know. There's there's that look. There's a, that degree of separation when you have a lot of money. You don't give a shit. You, you know, you slowly stop giving a shit about poor people, and you forget that they're even there, right? But now it's upwards of 40% of the country is living in object poverty, right? So you can't call the United States a wealthy nation. You can't say that there's an economic boom based on the fake unemployment numbers. That, that's all bullshit. Those are bullshit numbers. Don't swallow that. 4% unemployment in America? No way. It's more like 15, 20, maybe 23, 25%. We're at depressionary levels right now of unemployment. Or the new phenomena of underemployment, which not even underemployment, underemployment, but underpay. It's people that have that work forty hours and they still can't make a living. Right? That's it's 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 fucked up. It's wrong, right? And you can you can chase Jeff Sessions out of office and maybe get a fair trial on Imran Awan, right? But you still have to how do you it's in the taxation of corporations. Tax the corporations, lower the the military spending by eighty percent. Bring it back down, right? Stop the poverty draft, right? You got to keep. Pe Why do they want to pe keep people poor? You keep if you keep a poor population, they join the army, they go fight these senseless wars, insurgency wars. They keep that money machine going, right? So you want to stop that, right? That's how you do it, right? You lower the you you you. Raise the corporate tax rate. Bring down the military spending. 80, 80, 80, 80. Raise the corporate tax rate 80. That's the magic number. If you don't like that, uh, I, I just made it 90. I made it 90%. It's 90%. Now. Right, so that, that, there lies the answer. You raise the corporate tax rate. You bring down the, um, the military spending, right? And then the no brainers are. Universal single-payer health care is easy. 70% of the country wants it. 90% of the politicians lobby against it because of their, because of big farmer's stranglehold, right? So election integrity, you've got to go with paper, paper counting of ballots. You have to do it. They're cheating. These elections are rigged. They're totally rigged, right? You want to beat the, the, the fake media? You want, to, you want to beat the fake media at their own game? Easy. Just have fair elections, and they can't cheat anymore, right? I think, I mean, to me, the, a lot of these answers are, are rather simple. They're, they're, they're political, they're po political solutions to an economic problem. It's not wearing a pink pussy hat. It's not, you know, it's not fucking some idiot Q whispering secrets from the, you know, whispering secrets. No, it's, you know, and oh, a last comment, and I'll, 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 I'll kill this. Uh, someone is saying that it's naive to think that, um, and I respect your uh, uh, comments. I'll never delete a comment. If you comment here, even if you want to say my hair is fake and my teeth are too big, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> my hair is real. I'm going to do a real, prove my hair is real, right? I'll go to a barber and I'll have someone pull my hair, pull my fucking hair. And I'll prove to you that it's my hair. I'm not in a disguise. I wear big glasses. Yeah, so what? Fuck you. You know? I could see you. I see you fine, man. My teeth, they're normal. They're fucking... Ah, I got big teeth. <laughs> but, um... I, I don't even know what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Someone said that, um... What did they say? That, that, uh... 
that it's naive to think that um, it's naive to think that asking law enforcement to reveal themselves is and that and that you should wait around for them to present their stuff to the authorities to the proper authorities now what I just after what I just told you can can you point to the proper authorities what fucking DOJ it's all corrupt that's the point is that there is no proper authority anymore that the whole thing is 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 deeply polluted and deeply politicized deeply corrupt so you don't have you don't have proper authority there is no where are the proper authority if you want to leak something you know, walking into someone like Thomas Paine is, you know, rock star. You want to, you want a character like me to do it? Give it to me. I'll fucking put anything. I don't care if it's real and it's true. And you guys want to hold a, a town hall, or, you know, DC police want to hold a town hall. I'll be there. I'll be there next week. You want to hold a town hall and, 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 and reveal some stuff. That's, that's what I, that's how, what I see as the political revolution and, and where, where people stop protecting themselves and and go out for the country right it hurts the country to not to to have that information you know how many people in the metro metropolitan police right now know exactly what happened to seth rich and know exactly what happened to jenny moore and know exactly what happened in the dc hack and the the, the, the fraudulent uh, uh, information that that leaked out uh, that contradicts it there's so many people that understand it and know what happened exactly. So many people in the FBI and the CIA. But they're not, they're not allowed to, to speak up. That someday they're going to give it to the proper authority. Who? The, the politicians? Who? The, the, the Senate Intelligence Committee? They're a bunch of fucking money grabbers. Jerk offs, right? <laughs> there is no more authority. That's the point, right? So it's incredibly naive to think that you're... Look, my, I have a... Uh, you know, I fought City Hall, right? Head on, pro se, on my, you know, and I and I can tell you, and it's it's even it's a it's a brutal fight. They cheat. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's not naive. It's more naive to think that that someday we're going to jump out of a bowl of rice and we're going to provide. We're gonna we're gonna then reveal our stuff. Is incredibly naive. The time is now. Right here, right now. The time to reveal is right here, right now. Before YouTube shuts us all down, you know. This is the time to do it. My name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist. I'm a candidate for the United States Senate here in New York. I have a bunch of stickers in, in mint condition. I don't know where this one came from. <laughs> it's floating around over here. Go on eBay if you do. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it, every little bit helps. And uh, what else? Do I say? Yeah, I'll be in D.C. next week. It's gonna be this is gonna be interesting. What's, what am I doing in D.C.? I can find that. Mark Sconti, peace out.